talking about, we just spoke about the way of love. And we're very uh, cautious to not say what love is. But maybe I can say what love isn't. Because <laughs> we, we had this moment, we're like, oh, it's all back to love again. And it's like, oh, okay, we've, we've heard that before. But again, it's a clarification. Because I put the way of beauty, go, oh, love, it's all feminine, it's all nice, it's all sweet, it's all nice guy. But think about the word love, which is a really overused word. There's a very masculine element to love. People die for love of their country. They die yeah. for love of their ideals and their beliefs. Love isn't this just kind of feminine, nice, be sweet, energy. I even take it back to spiritual terms. People think of love as like Christian terms about Jesus, love, always sweet, tenderly thing. God is no, love. No, he was also the guy that got on the tables and threw things off. Overturned because he was passionate, it. overturned things. And so now we talk about love, we think, oh, that's just emasculating. No, it's not. If you believe that, Firmly, it's a very masculine thing. And it's a very high energy thing. There's also huge ease and delight about it. There's a peace in it. There's an authenticity to it. There's a rawness, a vulnerable. All the things we talk about in this book, even from going up to talking to a girl in a bar, and having these, these shared moments, experiences, authenticity, aliveness, and wonder, are encapsulated in that word if we try and understand it, even though none of us understand it. Mm-hmm. But in those moments where we do, the same moments we've seen incredible sunset or the stars getting romantic here, you feel that when you listen to an amazing piece of music, you feel that deep within you, that's the same emotion raw feeling we should be striving to, that authenticity where you're not thinking in your head, what do I say next? You're thinking, oh, I'm enjoying the sunset, maybe I should think about how I could appreciate the colours more. <laughs> you know, it, it all flows naturally from your body, yeah. Naturally, yeah. Have you got no inkling on what it is to say next. What is the next message? Oh, I don't know the next message, but I know, I know the next questions. Because um, I'm sat thinking, even though I've said the, the next thing has not quite arrived yet, I can feel it, but yeah. it's not quite ready. I also sense that by the time this video, this episode in the series goes public, <laughs> it's probably in full swing. And, um, yeah, actually, I don't want to sit here being like, oh, I don't Editors know what I'm know. talking about. Or what's <laughs> you want to see something yeah. grand and profound. Go ahead, Jordan. <laughs> Lay it down. Bring it, bring we we can update point. the comments below the, the video. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, now found the meaning of life. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it took it. an extra nine months, but it appeared one day when I was sat atop a rock. Yeah, atop a mountain top on yeah. your own. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it forth from nothing. But you've got next questions. Yeah, that's very much in the book, in this chapter. You read the alabaster pieces here. I mean, what are they about? They're not about like the island girl necessarily, but they're they're about um, the the grand scheme of things. So, for me, you know, the, the conversation about men and women, I, and, and, and that whole thing I've been doing for all these years, all my many, many, many years, and, and I'm always going to be learning and I'm always a student, but I think my conversation is done. It's here. And there's be other lights that'll shine. And, and say great, and, and add on to it, and change, and augment, and um, but I think that that conversation about relationships and men and women, I'm done. Not done understanding, but I think I yeah I get the sense I'm just getting the feeling that it's there. I put it there. Everything I have, everything I have is in that book. Um, for me, the next, uh, the large questions are, are about God. That's what I'm going to, that's what I have to understand. That seems to be the order to chaos in your book. Yeah. Like there's one, the alabaster pieces all completely make sense in my world. And then there's this one piece in Nicaragua at the end where yeah. it seems like you're saying that God must exist because there's so much beauty in the world. And then how can God exist when at the same time there's so much poverty and difficulty in the life there? That's the whole question. It's the age-old question. If there is a God, he's got a lot to answer for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, that is my next, for sure, that's my next exploration. I talked to, and, and you know what? 
the theme throughout my life. And for these 50 years, and for my next 50 years, the theme's not gonna change. And that theme is beauty. That is what my pursuit has been since I was very young. I'm trying to understand what the, the concept of beauty. I mean, um, you know, that, that concept to me is like, I want to understand. You could write a whole book just about beauty and the questions around it. And that is a complete alignment in my journey. My, my love affair with women, that's never going to change. I, 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 I adore and I'll always brighten and always be excited by the, by the spirit of women. I completely love women. It's my favorite thing in the world. And I equate women with beauty. And my journey of beauty just carries on to its natural extension of, of you know, trying to understand relationships in men and women. And now trying to understand on that spiritual side of things. Yeah. That's where I have to go. It's all in the context of beauty. Well, that's it. I mean, we can make a glib announcement here and say Zan's given up seduction and he's gone all spiritual and he's looking for God. <laughs> <laughs> but that's beneath, never... beneath the surface, the, there's no discrepancy between no, those and questions. That's, that's always been there. That's always been underlying. The whole book is that. You know? Yeah. It seems to me the most godliest of things to be the kind of person that can call out the alabaster beauty yeah. of another yeah. for everyone's benefit and delight absolutely yeah that's all I can say that's where I'm going that's where I have to that's the bigger questions that I have no clue and I have to I have to fight for it I'm a seeker man I need, I'm a treasure hunter and I'm excited <laughs> this book too is going to be the alabaster god <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, you never know um, you know what and I'm such a like every, everything I see as you guys can tell, because I struggle with words on things. And I'm pretty, I'm, I'm an articulate guy. I know a lot of words. I have a large vocabulary. And, um, but I still struggle. Because to me, it's all a painting or a tapestry or a, a weaving of concepts with words. I love words. I'm a lover of words. When I was, <coughs> when I was a poor kid, I read the dictionary. So you didn't have any other books. I read a dictionary. <laughs> I still, if I'm trying to, if, if, you know, all my years in school, if I was trying to look up a word in the dictionary, I'd be stuck there for 20 minutes. Wow, that's, I still love dictionaries and thesauruses and words. I just love it. I love words. And so I'm going to always be inhabiting that and express myself through words. But as you can tell, uh, it's through the, through the musings Trying to, trying to paint it with words as opposed to the actual saying something that's clear. So, I will be exploring new horizons. But my urgency has gone out of the conversation about men when it's gone. Strange. The urgency is gone because, the, because this is complete? Because it's been set, yeah. Yeah. And I said as strong, as strong as I know how, to my young self. And, it's, and, and for me, I mean, you keep asking me about my next phase. And I re reinvent myself all the time. And every decade is kind of it, right? So for, the next, so for me, it's a it's return. I'm, I'm returning back to virtually, metaphorically, to the forest. You can feel it. Doesn't mean I'm going to be living out there. Camping. <laughs> Just thinking back, uh, we laugh ourselves throughout the book. There's a common theme of a set of three. And when we talked earlier about Kierkegaard, good philosopher said, there's the aesthetic stage of life, there's the ethical, and there's a more spiritual, mm -hmm. transcendental, religious exploration. And it feels like with you and for people reading this, eventually it starts with these artistic questions, and then you go into more of the heart stuff and society. And then there is whatever that is to people, I'm not here to prescribe a worldview that. They're really big questions, the, the source of light, the perfect note you talk about. And I imagine that's a pretty attractive quality that women see in men if you're at that level rather than a, what do I do to text it back? What's a good yeah. line here at that level when you're talking about things like this? Yeah. The right women will find you Little as well. details don't matter. Yeah. And it's inevitable. 
this is an, I, I'm convinced it is inevitable if you are devoted to that to larger questions and, and pursuing mystery you're going to go in the same direction too I mean it, you, you'll end up in the same space which is asking really large um, spiritual and metaphysical questions out there otherwise because you guys don't settle you know saying yeah it's good enough I'm done learning. <laughs> Should we, um, like we're asking these big questions about God and next phases and what could be in the future. There's one woman bit that I'd love to skip back to that yeah. comes up in this last chapter. I mean, you want to give it one last round for like, the women questions <laughs> drop, drop back up. onto planet Earth and, and and God is a woman. We've decided that yeah. God is a woman. By the Figured way, out. <laughs> God is beauty. Beauty equals women. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's this whole piece here in the last chapter, and you, and it's a bit about coincidence being time shuffled around and replaced. Oh. And you are in Canada in a uh, wine merchant's yeah. with a woman. And all of a sudden, a, another woman from another era of your life walks yes. by, and you've got a current lover and a former lover, and there's an encounter of the two, and there's a joyous, fun conspiracy between these two women. Like you don't try and yeah, yeah, yeah. hide, no nerves, no shifting around. It's incredible. And yet, when the boyfriend of the the ex lover comes in, he is full of that oh, suspicion. Let's keep things separate over here. And something I know you've said for years has been like, you're not the kind of guy to juggle women. You much rather have all of you women in one place at the same time <laughs> and deal with that. Yeah. That's such a, a different perspective than most men have that want to keep that sense of separation throughout their, their love lives or their social lives. Yeah. Um, what do you want me to say about that? That's the question. How do you juggle the women? <laughs> <laughs> Your hands? Yeah. <laughs> Spinning plates, huh? Well, you know, it's like... I mean... Because I did that. I mean, I had a girl on Monday, and then she wants to see me on Wednesday, but I, I want to see another girl. Like, I did, I did a bunch of that. And that's... You know, and... and I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> Would you like all your women in one place? That's, is that what you were saying? If I had, if I was seeing two or three women at once, I don't want to see one on Monday and the other one on Wednesday. I put them in the same space. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. Let the chips fall where they may. Because I don't want to have that feeling like, oh, no, I'm kind of tired of Wednesday night, so I can't, because she wants to see you again. The girl you saw on Monday is excited to see you again. I'm free on Wednesday. Well, I kind of have plans. That feeling, like, eh, I don't like it. So. And yet a lot of guys will do that kind of juggling because they're intent on getting a specific result. Like, how can I keep people separate so I can get more of what I want? And I'd rather lose them all than have that feeling like of holding this one back from her desire to have fun and see me again, you know? And, and, and pretend I have something else I gotta do. And really I wanna see another girl. And I did that and I don't wanna do that. What makes it possible for a man to do that? To have all his women in one space and have oh, I didn't say it, I didn't say it works out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't necessarily say that. Well, it, it works out in the story here. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, that's happened. That kind of thing is very illustrative of, of that space and that you give a woman to, to be herself. And women understand that, that women have understood for years my love of women. The women that I'm with, my girl I'm with now understands I love women. And I'm surrounded by women all the time, not because she tolerates it, but because she, because she, because she understands that's my heart. And I would never, I would never, um, uh, I would never break my girlfriend's heart. And I want women around me. 
I like that, that energy and that feeling of it. I love it. Does that make sense? It seems like for you, I mean, I brought this conversation on the table because there's like, yeah, it's part of me that wants to make this great little YouTube clip for, for all the guys that want to be able to <laughs> oh, not, didn't. not juggle women anymore, uh, yeah. but have like this glorious community thing where everyone's shining and everyone's together. But that's a big question. And that's a big uh, shifting in perspectives for women and for men, right? But, it, but for sure, it's because of the way of my spirit. It's because of my spirit that are women that have been in my life can share space and time with other women who've been in my life. My 40th birthday party was, uh, I wrote about it. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah. I had uh, a surprise birthday party and it was like all my ex-girlfriends that could be rounded up showed up at the party. I thought, wow. It's not because it's something I'm doing. Yeah. It's just something that, that seems like that makes sense to me. Which for most men would be the idea of the worst possible night ever for their birthday to bring all their ex-girlfriends together. It would be the <laughs> worst thing ever. Happy birthday. Here's but I didn't do it. My <laughs> current girlfriend at the time. Yeah, because for you, it was a positive encounter. You never left. Yeah. Left things on a bad note. No. Well, not never. Yeah. And if there's it's more lately. Not, not lately, yeah. Mm. Seems like as interesting as this thing is, from this space where we're in, talking about God or what's next for the message or what is it yeah. to love and live a beautiful life, uh, compared to those kinds of questions <laughs> like this, how to invite women into the same space and have them get along. Seems seems like that seems so obvious to me. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't say that because it's very trite for me to say and kind of a maybe an arrogant thing to say that is so obvious because it is a big confusing thing for men. How do I do this? Like, um, but I think but I think it's been said. I think there's something Here. about being in this space right now where it's like doesn't feel urgent, doesn't feel important, feels no. obvious. Does it feel obvious to you? I mean, we could try it tomorrow night and fail spectacularly, right? But <laughs> From this place here, having sat in this conversation for this long. Yeah. Does what feel obvious? Like the whole thing about to juggle women or to invite them into the same space. And yeah, I think, that's, I think it's been said here. That's why it's like, I don't really have much to say when you ask yeah. me the question. I think it's very well illustrated here why that happens, not the methods to make that happen or what can guys do to, so that the girl he's seeing will, will like the, the other girl he wants to see. You know, that's, that's a small way of asking the question in my mind. It's like, who are you and what do you represent? And can women uh, see the vibrancy of you and support that? Hmm. That's what it is. It's not, it's not, a, it's not trying to create something. It's, it's the way I want the world to be. I like that, who are you and what do you represent? That's a good yeah. question to ask. Yeah. I'm a lover of women, that's who I am. Put that on my gravestone, you know? And, and that will never change. So, when, when that is, and, and, and you become congruent with who you are, finally in your life, and when you become congruent with it, then these kind of things like, you know, you're, you, the girls you've seen in your life before come together <coughs> and, and being on friendly terms and on, on empathetic terms it just seems like a very natural thing. Just, it's a very natural thing. But I said it, I said it wrong here, I think. I feel like taking a walk and going for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Is, yeah, is there yeah. anything else in this way of salvation? It's a tough one. Down. I mean, I could talk about my experiences where I've left girls behind in the same way. Now it's, I still talk to them. Every girl I've left behind, I've, I'm still talking to them now. Yeah. 
Yeah, I kind of feel like I wanted to end on some big crescendo profound moments. So we talked about love, symmetry, beauty. I'm going, I've got nothing left. Yeah. We, we've had a great conversation. It's been incredible. I think that's it, though. It's, it's like after all this painstaking, trying to figure out how everything works, put it in a system, making it clear, trying to make giving up on that, sitting in this paradoxes which don't seem to be possible, and having that clear up, the, the, hmm. there's nothing left after that. It is like, let's just go yeah. and have an ice cream. Yeah, I think that's a great yeah. next Step. life goal. <laughs> Wait, I've got the question. What flavor? Yeah. Because on page question. 353, you said you like vanilla, and page 376, you said you like strawberry, and there's a paradox there. So right. Right. Sounds, sounds, sounds all about vanilla. vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, let's do that. I think it's done. Shall we do what, how, how much time we got? Should we say a couple of minutes on the way of beauty? Yeah, I think so. So, cut. and we'll just cut it in cut out a second or two here yeah but um so chapter nine we go back to the way of beauty yes it's like one page long because it, it comes full circle all of the striving all of the you know the the essence of discovery seduction the natural men women love the way of salvation, call to action. And it comes full circle to beauty, which is the simplicity of it, which is the real journey, as I talked about earlier. And the train journey goes from beauty to beauty. Makes sense to me. The simplicity of ice cream at the end of it all. Yeah. What country is the Elysium Station? Nothing else here. Keep traveling, you'll eventually find it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got anything to say about this poem on the last page? Um, no, it speaks for itself. It's years old. I wrote it many years ago. In the very early, early um, attempts at starting this book. No. Well, like the ending on page 400 says, everything is in balance, everything, has, everything is as it should be. I've said it, gentlemen. I have nothing more to say. I've said it there. And I get that sense of it. Like, Put it away.